Although the name Shigeru Miyamoto may come to mind when thinking of the game developers behind Mario games, some of the plumber's most beloved 3D platformers, such as Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Odyssey, were largely influenced by game director and producer Yoshiaki Koizumi. With Miyamoto in fact protesting against various ideas put forward by Koizumi, some of which would ironically go on to be fan favourite elements of these games. The strong narrative found in Galaxy serves as just one example of this. On a personal level, I feel as though I have an affinity with Koizumi, as he, like myself, studied film at university, with a desire to visualise stories and ideas from his head in reality. What separates us is that he went on to become a senior executive of Nintendo, whilst I'm struggling to keep up a small YouTube channel, but hey, who knows what's around the corner. Anyway, when a young Koizumi joined Nintendo back in 1991, he was merely tasked with working on the instruction manual for the SNES title The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Due to his experience in film, Koizumi took it upon himself to create entire narratives for these games within their instruction manuals a concept that, at the time, wasn't common. His talent was obviously clear to Shigeru Miyamoto, as it wasn't long until he was hired as an assistant director on Nintendo's most ambitious game yet at the time, Super Mario 64. Miyamoto, as you'd expect, helmed the director's chair for Mario's first ever 3D outing, working closely with everyone involved to ensure its success. The directorial role pleased Koizumi, as he had originally aspired to be a director when studying film at university, although game directing isn't exactly what it had in mind. In his own words, his newly found goal was, quote, having a character in a certain kind of world go through a series of actions to accomplish something, creating a dramatic tension throughout that, as games seem like a really good opportunity to create the kind of drama you don't find in films. Fast forward to the next 3D Mario game, Super Mario Sunshine, and Koizumi was promoted from his assistant director position, taking over as director from Miyamoto, who still overlooked the game himself as the less involved yet higher ranking role of producer. Koizumi was responsible for the atmospheric and visual elements of the game, noting that he wanted Isle Delfino to feel not like Mario with the Piantas originally being envisioned as realistic humans, a concept that was used to its full potential 15 years later in Super Mario Odyssey. Although Sunshine isn't everyone's cup of tea, I'm sure most can agree that the visuals forming the game's tropical setting were impressive for its time, still holding up well today, as opposed to the game's controls and level design. For the following 3D Mario title, Koizumi remained as director, working on what is perhaps the defining Mario series entry of his career, Super Mario Galaxy. Whilst Miyamoto almost exclusively focused on gameplay as opposed to story, Koizumi wanted to highlight the impact of this element when implemented correctly, much to the objection of Miyamoto. The two went back and forth over the course of the game's development, as Koizumi pushed hard for certain story elements to be included, an example of this being the fascinating backstory of Rosalina and the Loomers. In regards to the conflict between himself and Miyamoto, as revealed in an interview to coincide with Galaxy's launch, Koizumi had this to say, quote, For a long time, it really felt like telling a story in a Mario game was something that wasn't allowed but I felt in this case that the Loomers and Rosalina really needed a story to explain what they were doing out there and to give the players a deeper understanding of their presence. The agreement that he and Miyamoto came to was that the backstory of these characters would be available as an optional extra to the player, resulting in the addition of Rosalina's storybook in the library, with its discovery not being required to beat the game, simply offering some insightful lore for those who come across it. Other aspects of Koizumi's narrative are scattered cleverly throughout cutscenes, dialogue, and, linking back to his original role, the instruction manual. Although Galaxy's dramatic stakes and story were one of the game's most acclaimed elements at launch, Miyamoto remained adamant that there should be, quote, as little story as possible. Following through with this to an extreme degree in the game's sequel, Super Mario Galaxy 2, 
in which Koizumi's ideas for expanding the lore beyond the first game were shot down by Miyamoto, who claimed, Mr. Koizumi is the type of person who, whenever we're working on a new Mario game, always wants to bring more story elements into it, as he did with Super Mario Galaxy. But in talking with him this time, he agrees and feels that with Galaxy 2, there won't be a need for as deep of a story. Though it sounds to me as though Koizumi was talked into submission, as there are several accounts of how he planned to continue the story into the second game, a remnant of this being a line of dialogue from Lubber, revealing that he and Rosalina had met before, which I imagine was originally intended to be expanded upon, before Miyamoto's intervention. In an interview with Miyamoto surrounding the release of Galaxy 2, the interviewer mentions the disagreements regarding story between himself and Koizumi, highlighting that in another interview with Koizumi, he revealed that he tries to sneak story elements into games past Miyamoto, to which he responded, well, I put a stop to that at the beginning this time, and for emphasis, punched his fist in the air. Wow, he really doesn't like stories, does he? The interviewer notes that it's not just Koizumi who's pushing back against Miyamoto's propensity towards minimalism. Miyamoto says he's also had some battles with the team making New Super Mario Bros. Wii over the story, before concluding Koizumi had the right idea. So this is what baffles me, not only does Koizumi disagree with Miyamoto, his entire team disagree with him. The interviewer disagrees with him, and more significantly, the actual fans playing the games disagree with him. Constantly praising Galaxy's superior story over that of Galaxy 2, describing the thrill and excitement of watching the cutscenes and action throughout the game. At the end of the day, these are just creative decisions, and there doesn't appear to be a legitimate intense rivalry between Miyamoto and Koizumi. But all of this begs the question, would Mario games be better off without him. One thing for certain is that Koizumi will likely be the one to take over, as when the question is put to him, he responds, certainly, if that situation presents itself, I'll be happy to do so. Noting that he already incorporates many of Miyamoto's techniques into his work, as he is, after all, the mastermind behind Mario himself, so there is more to him than his unpopular opinion of stories in video games. So yeah, I don't want to paint Miyamoto in a really bad light, as he's done so much for the Super Mario series over the years, but I've hopefully highlighted how much Koizumi has done too, and by presenting both sides of the story, it's now up to you to discuss your own opinions in the comments section below. Any likes, and especially subscribers, are greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.